Hey, what is up guys? Aditya Saikuma here with Arcray Studios back for another exciting tutorial. Uh, who am I kidding? Not Andrew Kramer. But I think I'm going to steal his tutorial style just because he's, he's an After Effects god. Anyways, this is my first ever tutorial and I thought I would give it a shot, especially with this pretty interesting effect which I got inspiration from after seeing the Now You See Me 2 trailer. Ridiculous movie, really fun though, and that one rain freezing shot looks really cool, and thought I'd give it a shot. So without any further ado, let's take a look at what we'll be creating. Now that right there. That, my friends, is called acting. <laughs> Anyways, what you will need for this tutorial is After Effects, obviously, Element 3D version 2.2, and that's really important considering that we need the deform options for the little jiggle, and a phone application called Photosynth. It's made by Microsoft. I'm sure it's definitely on the iPhone. I'm not sure about Android, but basically allows you to take a bunch of pictures and create a spherical map. And because we're doing water droplets, that's really important considering that we need to reflect the environment properly. So let us get started. Uh, I'm assuming that people watching this tutorial have a good understanding of After Effects and a basic understanding of Element 3D. So I won't go slow with all the basic stuff. So we'll get right to the, right to the fun stuff. So let's create a new composition and begin. And all that looks good, hit OK. Let's import, bring in our footage. And this is the original footage. Just me being weird looking around, holding my hand up. And yeah, lots of fun. First things first, let's build our asset in Element 3D. So go Layer, New, Solid, and call it raindrop or something then go to effect video copilot element scene setup and we are greeted with this so the raindrop is actually just a regular sphere and what I did was that I have the pro shaders 2 pack and I went over to translucent and I believe I used the chill preset kind of looks like that. It doesn't look like a water droplet just yet. It's too foggy. But uh, before we change that, we'll go into the environment and select our environment map. So I have that right over here. So if we turn the environment on, you'll see a nice little image of my neighborhood where I shot this. So it's starting to look good. Not there yet. We need to make it more reflective. Like water droplets are very reflective. So if I go into the shader, I can take a look at the reflectivity. I'll just jack that up, make this really reflective. Still not there yet. I'll also up the distortion for the refraction because water refracts as well. And then we'll go into the advanced settings and just lower the opacity just a little bit. Just a smidge so you can see the background through it. And then finally, I'll go into the glossiness here under the texture. Bring that down a bit, just a little bit. Actually, quite a lot. So now, if we go around that, it's starting to look like water. That's now we're getting somewhere. So we'll hit OK. And we have a, just a giant water sphere in the middle. And that, that doesn't look like anything just yet. What we'll do is go into group one, where our sphere is, into particle look, deform, and go to noise. So noise, if we enable that, will allow you to do see all these crazy looking things right here, but we don't want that much intensity. So what we'll do is up the intensity up to about, let's say 65%. And what we'll do is animate the evolution. So if I move this up and down, you can see that it jiggles. Just like, I don't know, maybe frozen water would. Just gives it a more interesting look. I'll create a expression. Option click the stopwatch right here. 
and I'll say time times say 800 Let's stop and that automates the entire process so if I just solo the raindrop and hit a preview we'll see nice jiggly sphere cool that's a great start and the best part is about this effect if we look at the original composition it's not even that many layers it's actually very simple everything happens inside of the rain element 3d layer because we're using the element 3d's replicator to create a giant I don't know, volume of water droplets so then if i reduce the particle size to something manageable like that and then i change the particle replicator from a point to a 3d grid i'll be able to just increase these numbers all the way just a little bit just to get a, a general look and then increase the scale starting to get somewhere and then go into the random into the scatter scatter it a bit boom make it random x y and z scatter just randomize this a bit I can change the particle size random so we got some different shapes all together and so this is a good start now we just got a bunch of jiggly water spheres now it's time for the fun part which is making them stay what we'll do is 3d track so select your footage animation track camera I usually go to the advanced and just hit detailed analysis just because I generally get a better track that way and leave it to auto auto detect and we'll let it do its thing all right and we're back so with the 3d tracker has created us a bunch of track points and what we'll do I'll select one since my I barely move I can select right here create null and camera and what that'll do is create a null track right there and it'll stick to my shirt pretty well not bad and also it creates a 3d camera so if I turn the raindrops back on you'll notice that things are going kind of crazy but if we want to have more control what we'll do is select the raindrop go into group one at the very bottom go to create group null and hit create and this will create a group null which will allow us to move the mass of raindrops as a whole and what we'll do because we know our track point is in a very is in a solid place in 3d space what we'll do is copy position data so hit p over track null one you'll see the position and then p in group null one and we'll do is we'll select the position copy hit control c and click the position here control v and so now they both share the same position in 3d space so I'll just go to where my hand stops like right there and we will really only reveal it when that happens boom and then Let's bring it back here so now we have like this whoa it's tracked and not bad at all so actually that is pretty much it if we look at this preview right here we get and that is pretty much the entire effect everything else is just a matter of refinement so I would add probably more water droplets I would probably decrease the general size of the water droplets I would go into the 3d camera itself and change up the depth of field so I'd first activate it of course and then change up the focus distance so now see that's closer it's really blurry if I changed it to be maybe less let's call it a thousand oh perfect the water droplets are on are all in focus 
but the further we get away, just like how I'm getting out of focus, so do the water droplets. So if I added more droplets that are closer to the camera in Z space, those would be in focus. So adding that little camera effect grounds our droplets into this world. And it blends the CG into the live action really nicely. After that, it's just a matter of color grading and adding in the motion blur. And that is practically it. It's a very simple effect, pretty effective. And if you're interested in animating it, it's just a matter of taking this group null right here and animating the position left and right, back and front, whatever you want. And it's pretty effective, really cool, really simple. And that is practically it. So that was my first tutorial, guys. If you found it interesting or informative, please let me know. If not, also let me know. Uh, I'd like to be able to create more of these. And if you're interested in learning anything that I could possibly teach, please let me know. And uh, yeah, signing out.